Hello and welcome guys, ArmageddonVDC here, today with a new tutorial about a GUI, fluid, kind of metaball, loader animation that you are often seen, or they are not so, they're not so common, but um, I guess you're all familiar with uh, loader GIFs, like if something is processing in the background, your mouse cursor changes to this little loading animation, and yeah, or if a uh, image is loading on a website. There's also this loading animation and we're going to create a very unique variation of it. And I've got inspired by Mohammed Amiri while I was going through the web looking for some fluid GUI animations. And yeah, I really like this one right here and I've wondered how he created this. So I've tried to recreate it in um, After Effects and I've got a very similar and good looking result actually. So let me just show you real quick. I'm just going to play it back. As you can see, I've just used uh, two circles right here. Of course, you need to up the amount of circles to get the same animation. But as you can see, it looks really fluid, like the little green drop is plopping out of this purple circle right here and then coming together and loading forever, which looks really great. And if this would be a loader GIF, I would look at it like all the day. <laughs> um, yeah, enough with the preparation, let's actually start and yep new project you are going to learn a lot in this tutorial of course not if you're very advanced in um after effects but we're going to use a bit of basic expressions and we're going to use slider controls and yeah i'm just going to show you well create a new solid for our background Although this is not really needed, you will see later on why that. So um, next up, we need to create a null object. This is going to be our reference so that the anchor point of our circle stays in the middle while it's rotating around it and coming together like for the spiral animation. And um, I think I've got to forgot or I forgot to mention that I'm going to link his profile in the description, of course. So check him out. Leave him a like there. And let's um, talk about this script right here, the move anchor point. If you're searching for it right now, you will not find it. It's a extra script that I'm also going to link in the description. It's just a basic script uh, to give you some more or to eventually shorten your time that you spend to find the perfect middle for your anchor point right here. So. Um, all you need to do is download the script, there's a readme in it, and just put it into your After Effects folder, scripts, UI panel, and yeah, just throw it in there, and you're going to find it under Window, Move Anchor Point, then you have to restart After Effects. So make sure to center up our anchor point of the null object, then center it in the comp area, just like this. And next up, we are going to create our circle. So make sure to not have anything selected right here. Otherwise, you're going to create a mask and hold down shift to create a perfect circle right here. And do the same. Put the anchor point in the middle and put our circle into the middle. Next up, select our circle. Go to transform. And go to the effects and presets panel right here and type in slider, slider control. Just drag it on the circle itself. Now hold down Alt while clicking on the anchor point stopwatch. And oops, make sure to um, extend the null layer right here. And now we need to do is actually pick whip the anchor point of our circle to the position of our null. So let's do this right here just like this. We're going to get this automated expression by, um, oh, did I misclick? Oops, let's delete this again. We're going to get this automated expression by uh, After Effects. There we go, this is what I wanted. I think it's even, I need to directly select the anchor point, hold down Alt while clicking on the stopwatch right here, just like this. Now select the pick whip, and go to position. Okay, it was right. Now uh, make a let's let's multiply this value that we get from here times 
oops, misclicked again, times three, for example. Um, this way, we would get the a continuous animation. We can change the the distance that our circle is actually going. So, yeah, I'm just going to show you. It's easier to explain if I show it to you. Make sure to select this number right there, the three or whatever you wanted to type. Hold down the pick whip tool and leave it on the slider right here. Then you get this expression. All you need to do is press command and enter. And we have this right here. So you're asking yourself, why so much hassle for a little animation right here? But you're going to see in some seconds. Make sure to uh, make a keyframe for the slider. Press U. As you can see, it created a um, keyframe right there. Let's go to the middle. Let's type in around 0, 0,25. Now select this keyframe at the beginning again and bring it to the end. So we have the same start and ending position. So there's an endless looping loading animation. Let's quickly change the color of it because it looks kind of... There we go. This little purple color looks great. And as you can see, it goes out and comes in again. Now all we need to do is actually animate the rotation. So we're starting from zero and we need three full, um, three full rotations right there. As you can see, it goes out like a spiral or swirl and then coming in again. Boom, there we go. There we go. Of course, we don't want to see the null object right here. That's our shape. And next up, what we need to create is our next circle right there. Let's give it a different color. Just control C, control V to create another one. Let's make the size way smaller, just like this. I just press S to get the scale right here. And of course, I want some variation right now. I want that the green circle right here is somewhere around the outside of the um, purple circle right here. So what we need to do is make sure that you only have this one selected right here. Crank up the value that our expression is multiplied by. So maybe type in 0, 0,45. Okay, that was not enough. So let's make 6,5. And since we are going to apply this gooey effect on it, like that it's sticking together, really sticky, um, I want that the the green circle right here at this position is going to be separated or detached from the purple circle right here. So let's make it even further away. Okay. And let's see. Okay, there we go. Now, of course, we don't want to see um, the green layer in front of our purple run. Just like this. And now we get to focus on the GUI effect. Make sure to select our three elements right here. Right click, pre-compose, hit OK. Let's see. Yeah, all fine. And now add a Gaussian blur. To the pre-comp right here. Crank it up to around, I don't know, 13. Next up, we're going to add a simple choker. Boom, drag it in here and let's crank this up to like nine. And let's see how this looks. Going to render it real fast. Oh, this is really small. <laughs> but it looks really, really gooey. Really like this. And then this little thingy comes out of it and boom, comes in together. Okay, um, it's looking too small, so we should be um, readjusting the size maybe to 65. Let's see. Also, the distance is way too off, so go in here, press U. It's basically trial and error getting the the perfect animation. I mean, motion design is almost a lot of trial and error and you're just adding expressions here and there and this and you're just getting an awesome animation. 
from out of nowhere and <laughs> well let's see how it looks so bloop, the green thingy goes out and then whoosh it grabs it again looks really fluid i love it and of course to achieve the same animation as Mohammed Amiri right here. You need to crank up this size or just grab the whole uh, composition and uh, adjust the scale. And I think in this animation there are around five circles like this purple, blue, turquoise, a bit more green as you can see right here. Like one, two, three, four. Yeah, I would say five different um, five different circles right here. Also, you need to adjust the distance from this circle to the green one, and you're going to get the same effect eventually. So let's see if we crank this up. Yeah, of course, it gets um, blurry, so you need to do this in a pre-comp right here, because here we have shape layers that are actually vectors or paths, if you want to be very precise. And yeah, let's see why is there this weird blue line around it. Do I have a stroke on it? Nope. Okay, then it's just my monitor. Um, yeah, now let's see. So it swishes around it. We could also try to create another circle right here. Maybe give it this blue color. Boom, press U. Make sure to give it a different, um, a different distance, maybe like three, five. I think this was not much. Yeah. Okay, let's crank this up to five. And of course we need to, oh, we just want one keyframe in the middle. We need to adjust the keyframing right here. Let's see. I don't want that everything is in one position right here, so. Let's switch up the rotation a bit. It's just important that you have the same beginning, just the purple one, and the same ending, the purple one. So you're getting a endlessly looping animation right here. Let's see how it looks. And press play. The distance is way too much off right here. If we're using the simple choker with a positive um, choke mat value, it's going to make everything really small. I mean, you can put it in the in the negative value area and crank up the blurriness, and you're going to get different results. So just try it out right here. This is very important to get the smooth, uh, the smooth fluid meta ball look, kind of like you're used to from Cinema 4D animations with meta balls. You could also create this with Cinema 4D pretty easy, actually. But I really like this right here because you can, yeah, nothing. <laughs> I think with the Cinema 3D, it's uh, 4D, it's the same workflow. Okay, it looks really gooey. Maybe, maybe let's adjust the the distance right here. I think that's too much. Which layer is the blue one? This alrighty. So let's bring this to around 0. Or maybe, come on, 3.6. Let's see how it looks right here. Oh, it's still so far off. Okay. Maybe even less. Oh, it's because we have this point right here. Okay, now it's almost not rotating, which is kind of weird looking. But yeah, I think you've got the techniques always. Just like always in my tutorials, it's not about learning how to just copy this style right here or this effect one to one. I'm going to show you the techniques like using simple shulker, Gaussian blur, um, own coded expressions using slider controls, which is more like, I would say, a bit more advanced in After Effects. Um, expressions are really, really a great way to create unique and advanced animations. So, 
yeah, just use this as a guideline to create your own um, animations for loading GIFs as an example. And I wanted to show you a different bit of variation when creating those um, those those loader animations. So I would just want to inspire you to create own stuff. So let's show you another technique. I've just disabled the other um, layers right here. There are the circles. I'm going to show the effect called echo. This basically replicates this circle right here and sets them off by this echo time right here. Make sure to set this to around minimum. And let's give it a echo time. I don't know. This is really trial and error right here. Really hard to guess. 0 0.25 and like three copies. I animate this. Oh, of course you have to watch out with typing 0 0.3 or 0 0,3. Uh, America and Germany is different there. So 0 0.3 should be the thing that I've wanted to show you. We're getting like this window loading animation, uh, windows, boom, as you can see. It's going out like a swirl and then coming together. Of course, you need to adjust the size because this looks more like a worm or something, but so you can see just a quick little, uh, little fix and you're going to get a whole different animation. Let's turn this on right here, even make it fluid and let's see how it looks. Looks like a slime ball, gooey mooey. There we go. Really unique, but I really like it actually. Don't you think? Look at this. Well, guys, by adjusting all those little parameters, parameters, damn hard word for me, and values, you're going to get something similar to this. Of course, what I would recommend to you guys is just use some trial and error um, techniques. Of course, you could up the blurriness, bring down the choke mat to a negative value, as you can see right here. It's going to get very harsh then. Something like this. And if we animate it, we're getting a different animation again. This looks really gooey at the end. Look at this. Okay, and I think that's it for this tutorial. Pretty fast for my normal tutorials but i just wanted to show you how to create this real quick and yeah i think i'm also going to make a second part out of this or yeah maybe showing you some milky animations like or water like animations where there's a ball dropping into water and yeah if you enjoy if you would enjoy them just write it down in the comments leave some more suggestions for new tutorials regarding illustrator cinema 4d after effects photoshop but um, for Photoshop, I have to add that it's very hard to actually find images that I can use without getting sued by the copyright owners. But otherwise, I won't find very great images. I want to pay like 20 euros for one image because I would need like 20 or 30 of them for a tutorial for photo manipulation. And that's like really hard. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. See you in another video. Leave a comment, like, and subscribe if you enjoyed this video. And see you in another video, guys. Armageddon videos.